Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and today I'm going to taste the best wines of Germany. Or at least some of them. A few weeks ago, I tasted my way through the best wines of Germany at the VDP tasting. Over 450 wines from the best sites and most of the best producers were available to taste. And I selected my favorites and I want to share them with you today as I've done in the past with those VDP tasting videos. This time, however, I don't just want to focus on Germany's flagship varietals, Riesling and Spätburgunder. Instead, I want to include six of the main grape varieties grown in Germany. Eins, zwei, Polizei. I mean, eins, zwei, let's taste. German winemakers have done a good job of getting people to understand that Riesling and Pinot Noir grow well here, but only roughly one third of all of the vineyards are planted to those two varieties. There are other varieties that can produce outstanding results, and I want to put them more into the spotlight today. The VDP, the Verband Deutscher Prädikatsweingüter, is an organization of most of the best producers in Germany. And at the Vor Premiere, they allow a selected group of tasters access to the most recent Grand Cru or Großes Gewächs releases of those wineries. The quality of the wines is extremely high and I could have selected a completely different list of great wines, but these are the wines that kind of stood out to me. I also need to add that more than 80% of the wines at the event were made from Riesling and Spätburgunder, so the competition for the first place in those two categories was far more intense than for, let's say, Grauburgunder. But now let's start sniffing and slurping. Okay? The first one is the 2021 Am Lumpen 1655 Silvana from Rainer Sauer in Franken, Franconia, and it retails for around 30 US dollars. The 2021 vintage is the most recent release by the VDP, and it was a bit of a tricky vintage. It was quite cold, rainy, there were problems with diseases, so it's not a great vintage overall, but if you focus on quality in a difficult vintage, you can still produce amazing wines. And while the wines tend to be a little bit lighter, fresher, and more restrained than the 2020s or the 2019s, the 2021s are actually quite nice and can be really amazing like this one here. This vineyard, Am Lumpen 6055, is actually quite a warm vintage. It's shaped like an amphitheater and it's exposed to the south. It has quite a steep slope, so the vines get a lot of sunshine and therefore can produce really concentrated fruit even in colder years. The vineyard's name Am Lumpen, which translates to at the kitchen towel, was first mentioned in 6055 and that's why they have that year attached to the name. Silvana is an interesting grape variety. It's planted on 4,600 hectares in Germany, but it's actually one of the biggest losers over the last few decades, so it was planted in way more places. It is really at home in Franconia, in Franken, where it's really part of the identity of the winemaking scene. But the biggest vineyards are actually in Rheinhessen. It is a grape variety that has very delicate and elegant flavors, and it can produce really amazing wines. For me, it's kind of comparable to Chenin Blanc, so it's not very opulent flavor-wise, but it has great acidity, and you can make dry wines out of Savanna, but you can also make really good sweet wines out of Silvana. So there are many different options for the winemaker. And yeah, it's definitely something worth exploring if you haven't tasted any Silvana in the past. The wine is still really young and it has flavors of pear, apple, but there are also yeasty, spicy notes coming through. So it feels a little bit wild. On the palate, it's yeah rich and concentrated, but it's not overpowering. I mean, the alcohol is at 13%. And there's this fresh, vibrant acidity that cuts through everything. So it doesn't, it's not fat on the tongue. It's really lively on the finish. And it has a very long length. There's even some mintiness coming through. So it's really complex. And this is young. So this has just recently been bottled. And I think this will develop really well over the next 10 years, maybe five to 10 years. I mean, it's fun now, but I think there's more. There's more lying in that wine that just needs to come out over time. I'm going to rate this wine 94 points. I think it's really beautiful. It's very complete, very complex. And I think, yeah, it is an awesome wine, especially when you consider the price quality ratio. If it retails for 30 US dollars, it's a bargain. A previous vintage of this wine has been featured in one of my VDP tasting videos in the past. This is the 2021 Birklin Wolf 
Pechstein Riesling from the Pfalz and it retails for around 100 US dollars. The name of this vineyard comes from an extinct volcano, the Pechsteinkopf, which was active in the past in that region. And the basalt that you can find in the soil comes from that place, but it was actually worked into the soil by workers in the past to improve the soil quality. And this kind of makes you wonder, how much of terroir can actually be man-made? I mean, this is clearly not something that was there, but it was brought there and kind of stayed there and changed the dynamics of the vineyard. The name kind of brings up this spectacular image, but if you go there and walk around, it's not a spectacular sight. The slope is kind of soft and it's not filled with basalt stones. There's also quite a lot of sandstone and loam and clay. So it's not all black, but it makes really spectacular wines, in my opinion, at least. And I'm aware that I'm opening this bottle way too early. Sorry. 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 Birklin Wolf is one of the leading producers in Germany. They've been a pioneer in organics and biodynamics. And they're actually a pretty big estate. But they still produce really great wines. Yeah, this is just stunning. I love this wine and I think I also love this side, but I do love this wine. It's super deep, concentrated and rich, but it doesn't feel heavy at all. The same on the palate, you get lots of freshness. It's really, really long, like a laser beam basically, but it leaves a strong impression on your tongue like a laser beam would probably. It smells of lemon zest, lime, also a little bit of orange. There's apricot flavor coming through, green apple, the core of the green apple, but it smells beautiful. And there's some wild funkiness as well. On the palate, it is really rich and fresh and long. It's quite delicate as well so that's kind of a contradiction but it is just like that and i mean it has 12 percent 12 and a half percent of alcohol so it's not powerful it leaves a long lasting impression though i will rate this wine 97 points i think it's just beautiful an amazing wine really outstanding and I so regret pulling the cork this early. I think this will last for decades easily, but what can I do? Before I taste the rest of the wines, let me first thank the sponsor of this video, Shaker and Spoon. Thanks to Shaker and Spoon, I've tasted lots of really interesting, exciting cocktails over the last few weeks. Cocktails that I would have never been able to make without buying tons of different ingredients. Shaker and Spoon sends out a monthly cocktail subscription box that allows you to mix different cocktails without having to make or buy the syrups, bitters and garnishes. In each monthly subscription box, you get three recipes that are themed around one spirit like bourbon, vodka or rum and you get all of the cocktail ingredients for 12 cocktails. All you need on top of that is your favorite spirit. My favorite spirit is scotch, so this time I got the Summer Scotch 2 box and I'm making the A Worn Path cocktail that consists of scotch, strawberry cordial and IPA tincture and I think even I can do it without making a fool of myself. Whiskey, strawberry cordial, hopped up IPA tincture, ice, stir and drink. That's good. So click the link below and use the code ConstantinBaumMW or go to shakerandspoon.com slash ConstantinBaumMW to get $20 off of your first box. That's shakerandspoon.com slash ConstantinBaumMW or use the link below and the code ConstantinBaumMW for $20 off. Before I continue with the tasting, I'll have another sip. And now let's get back to the wines. The next one is the 2019 Salvei Kirchberg Weißburgunder from Baden and it retails for around 50 US dollars. Weißburgunder or Pinot Blanc is planted quite widely in Germany. There are 5,900 hectares of it, most of it in Baden and then Rheinhessen and the Pfalz. And yeah, I mean, there are some quite simple bland wines being made out of this grape variety, but you can also produce 
really beautiful, complex white wines. Heinrich Nepomuk Steyert founded this winery in the early 20th century, and it's today run by Konrad Salvei. And I think he's producing really amazing wines right now, out of the Pinot grape varieties. So he's really at the forefront of pushing the boundaries of what is possible with Pinot Blanc and Pinot Gris, but also Pinot Noir. The Kirchberg Vineyard sits at 200 to 260 meters at the Kaiserstuhl, which is in the southwest of Germany, close to the French and Swiss border. And quite a lot of really good Pinots come from that area. The soils are stony and of volcanic origin, and the vineyard is planted to Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay. So they are mainly the Burgundian grape varieties planted there. This is the 2019 vintage, which was quite a bit warmer than the 2021 vintage. But you don't necessarily feel that in this wine. It shows a little bit more maturity, but it doesn't have like concentration and alcohol. It's more fine, elegant, structured on the palate with a long finish and lots of vibrancy. They don't cover up the fruit with too much oak. Instead, they use large oak vessels or old oak vessels. They also keep the wine for a long time on the lees in order to give them a little bit more creaminess and richness on the palate and slightly wilder, funkier aromas. So this smells of a ripe apple, but also lemon zest. And you also have kind of like a lemon tart flavor coming through as well. This is the combination of the leaves with the fruit. On the palate, it has body and concentration, but it has so much freshness and vibrancy on the finish. So this really reminds me of a very well-made wine from Burgundy, a white wine from Burgundy, like a Chablis maybe. So it's quite balanced, fresh, vibrant, and yeah, everything is just there. At Zalvay, they try to make wines that last, and this really just starts getting into the drinking window. Certainly a wine that will be beautiful with lots of different fish dishes. So anytime you'd normally take a great Chardonnay from Burgundy or whatever, you can take this and it will do a great job. I think this is beautiful. I'll rate it 95 points. Great Pinot Blanc. The next one is the 2019 Salvei Henkenberg Grauburgunder from Baden. And it retails for around 30 US dollars. It might be a bit weird to include two wines from the same winery in this tasting. But I just think that the wines from Salvei are underappreciated. And they are pretty good bargains still. I think you can get really, really great wines at low prices. On top of that, Grauburgunder or Pinot Gris is a bit underappreciated in Germany at the moment. Lots of people drink it, but many sommeliers and wine professionals don't like it because it can be a bit bland, a bit boring. But I think it's wrong to hate the grape variety. I think you just have to look for producers that do the right things with that grape variety and Salvei is definitely one of them. The Henkenberg is a pretty warm site in southern Baden and it's not just warmed by the sun, it's also warmed by Mediterranean winds coming up through the Rhone Valley to that location. The name dates back to the fact that it was the place where people were hung, where the gallows were. Maybe you can still taste that in this wine. Let's see. Rauburgunder is pretty widely planted. It's planted on 7,400 hectares in Germany, most of it in Baden again, and then Rheinhessen and the Pfalz, but you can find it in many different places. Mm. So this is actually quite a step up in terms of concentration and aromatic expression. Remember, Pinot Blanc and Pinot Gris are actually the same grape variety, mutations of Pinot Noir, but they can exhibit quite different characteristics. Pinot Gris in general is a little bit more aromatic, a little bit more flavorful and can be a bit more rich on the palate as well. And this shows exactly that. So you get ripe pear aroma. You get a little bit more oak flavors coming through as well. Not a lot of oak, but a little bit more oak flavors than on the Pinot Blanc, on the Weissburgunder. And then you also have like a little bit of brioche, a little bit of yeast flavors coming through. And then there's this pear apple dimension coming to. You also have some reduction there, a little bit of 
well, yeah, struck match flavor. So it's quite complex on the palate. It actually shows muscles, richness and concentration broken up by the fresh acidity that kind of cleans up the tongue after the concentrated mass of the wine has disappeared. So it is a bit more bulky, but really well made. I will rate this wine 95 points. I think it's excellent, brilliant Pinot Gris. It could have a little bit more balance, a little bit more length. I know I'm expecting great things of those wines, but in order to get higher marks, I think it should be just slightly more balanced to be like in the world class of things. But it's outstanding. I'm moving on to the red wines and I'm tasting the 2020 Rudolf Fürst Hunsrück Spätburgunder Pinot Noir from Franken, Franconia, which retails for around 150 US dollars. The Fürst family has been in the wine business since the 17th century, but Rudolf and Monika Fürst took over the winery in 1979 in order to focus on Burgundian wines and Riesling. Sebastian Fürst today runs the winery and I think he's been quite instrumental in establishing this wine, which is kind of a more recent addition to the Große Gewächs family. In 1971, Hunsrück was included in the really well-known vineyard Zent Grafenberg, but since 2010, it got its identity back and it can now be bottled under the old name that has been known for a long, long time. The vineyard is located in a valley close to the Main River it's exposed to the south and it's a pretty warm microclimate. The soil is Buntsandstein, which is sandstone that is colored slightly red because of the high iron content. I made a couple of videos on Pinot Noir, so just a few things. It's by far the most widely planted red grape variety in Germany, with roughly 11,660 hectares planted to Pinot. And that makes Germany the third biggest country for Pinot production after France and the US. Pinot production has grown significantly since the 1990s. And so has the quality and the wines are better and better, can get more expensive and more expensive as well. But I think compared to Burgundy, they are still a bargain. And you can get lots of different expressions from the different winemaking regions in Germany. This one got quite a lot of attention because the previous two vintages were rated 97 and 98 points. That's a lot for German Pinot Noir, but the wine is just stunning. It smells of blackberries, raspberries, but there's also black tea spice notes coming through, a little bit of oak flavor as well. So you got a little bit of chocolate powder there on the palate. It's rich, structured, very long, very precise. It's just stunning. Because of the depth and the complexity of the Hunsrück, I'm going to rate it 97 points. It is stunning, outstanding Pinot. And well, it is the most expensive wine in this tasting, but in the general context of Pinot Noir, at this quality, it's not that expensive. So... Wow, this is a tough act to follow, but I'm going to finish the tasting with the 2019 Dautel Michaelsberger Lemberger from Württemberg, which retails for 40 US dollars. The vineyard is a steep southern slope on colored marl soils, and it's named after the Michaels Church on top of the hill. The winery has been around since the 16th century, and it's now run in the 21st generation by Christian Dautel who's worked in the US, in South Africa, Australia, Austria, France, you name it. And he's now bringing all of that knowledge back home and producing some really great wines. The grape variety is called Lemberger in Germany and Blaufränkisch in Austria. And it's planted on around 2000 hectares in Germany, but the vast majority can be found in Württemberg. It is an interesting grape variety because it's a good addition to German Pinots. It's a bit more concentrated and rich, for me, it's a little bit like a mix of Gamay and Syrah, as in it can be quite fruity, but it can also be a little bit more spicy and structured. So the grape variety certainly has quite a lot of potential in Germany. This is quite intense and complex. So you have flavors of blackberries, blueberries. There's also a little bit of black pepper coming through. It's quite an expressive nose. On the palate, it's 
juicy but also structured so there's a good balance there between the grippy tannins and the fresh acidity and solid mid palate so yeah it's a bit more yeah rich and concentrated than german spätburgunder it has a bit more bite to it different wine for different occasions i'm going to rate this 93 points i think it's a beautiful expression I think it's also, like all of the other wines, too young. So this can be aged for a bit longer to mellow it out and give it a bit more tertiary flavors. But it's already there. All right, this was an exciting tasting. And I think these wines all showed really well. I'm very happy with my selection. My favorites, I gotta be honest, were the Pechstein and the Hunsrück to just beautiful wines and I know that I'm contradicting myself a little bit here because I wanted to highlight the other grape varieties as well but Germany is still best at Riesling and Pinot I gotta be honest but there's more there's more and there's potential to get better and better at the other grape varieties as well I don't see any reason why the other four wines can't be even better can get even better in the future they are certainly in my opinion still fairly cheap for what they represent so you should definitely try and check out these wines or maybe those grape varieties in your home markets to get a broader image of what german wine is so thank you for watching if you like this video then please like it down here subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already my question of the day is what is your favorite grape variety grown in Germany apart from Riesling and Spätburgunder? Please comment down below and give me some suggestions what wines I should try for myself. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay durstig, uh, thirsty. Thirsty.